Hello again, Mavic traders, and welcome out to your daily currency recap. This is Ankit here, and let's break down today's uh, market price action. It's the last day of the month, April 30th. Let's get into it. As always, we'll be taking a look at broader market analysis, then bring it down to our currency baskets, and then take a look at some possible setups ahead. Let's get into it. Do you want to be a professional trader? Maverick Currencies is the oldest US-based Forex and crypto prop trading company that will pay you for trading with our capital. Trade our capital and keep 70 to 80% of the profits. We are looking for traders just like you that are hardworking and motivated. Click the apply link on the top right of this video to see if you have what it takes. That link takes you to a four minute video that explains the trader position available and you read a list of FAQs that answer pretty much all the basic questions you have at this point. After watching the video and reading the FAQs, if you're interested, fill out an application, then you'll watch the full length recruiting video and then schedule an interview with one of our traders. Are you our next trader? So looking at our market analysis today it was definitely an exciting day. Let's take a look at news of the day. And this was in a sell off across the board. So the big question was that, hey, why are we selling off? Because there's a couple of things we talk about in the currency uh, room on the weekend. The equities were at a crossroad where um, they were in a little bearish formation and they had a nice rally. We got really up to that 20 and the 50 to moving average. But here we are rolling over. The second thing is that the bond yields, the bond yields are rising. And if you take a look at two year bond yields, okay, they're rising about 5% once again, you know, uh, after making that big fall in the late last year, we are slowly climbing back up. So again, that's not a good news for the equities. So that's why we are the bond yields and the dollar rallying higher and the equity markets are being under pressure. And we also have the FOMC tomorrow. So that again, kind of throws in the picture here. The markets are being a little cautious as we go into tomorrow. Now, if we take a look at the numbers today and let's just jump right in. Where's the biggest move? That's the USD. Again, I'll talk about how USD is a bit of a tough short because every time it starts, looks like it's weakening. It just gets snapped right back up. And again, the reason why is that we, first, we are seeing a risk off uh, sentiment today. So it really helps the dollar. But secondly, we are seeing the yields. The yields is really um, in line with uh, the USD here. So there's a correlation there. And whenever the correlation is tight, it's important to take a look at it. Now, outside of the USD, take a look at it. So at the end, and Swiss franc, they did not participate in this um, risk off movement here. So something to note, they are being the underperformer. And if you take a look at the biggest hit is the Aussie and the Kiwi. And the Aussie and the Kiwi is really getting bounced around. And I think at this point, if you take a look at relative strength of weakness and correlation, the Aussie and Kiwi is moving along with the dollar and the equity. So as the dollar goes higher, Aussie Kiwi weakens. As the market goes higher, the Aussie and the Kiwi is strengthening because, again, it's a risk on rally. So we're seeing these correlations are kind of working in place. And it's important whenever these correlations are working, you want to be paying attention to it. Now, on the other hand, the uh, euro and the pound, well, guess what? They actually are stronger as well. They're the second and third stronger currency today. So that's really where the money is going. And this is uh, important to take a look at. It's just not the dollar, but the euro and the pound at the same time is, is looking strong as well. So these are the pairings we'll be taking a look at as we go into our possible setups. Now, if we take a look at the markets in uh, the broader markets, the S&P again down 1.39%. Uh, VT stock world, world stock index is down as well. Gold is down. Oil is down. So pretty much everything is down. But take a look at the big sell-off in the crypto markets, down 7.5%, 8%. Again, the crypto, we talked about it, that you know momentum is over, it's just low basing, and we just got a big fall today. So that's the case across the board. You can see Ethereum looks the weakest, 9.17%, uh, Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin. So pretty much there was no place to hide. Everything was really falling apart. Now, let's take a look at a market outlook, because I think this is where we were at the crossroad. Let's take a look at the chart. This is where we were on Friday. And I talked about how I want to be changing the score as we get a confirmation of a, uh, breaking above the 20 to 50. And guess what? We just rolled over right from that level. So this is where uh, this again looks more like a bear rally to me where, you know, you have a change of trend and then we just make a lower low with a lower high right back to the moving averages. Here we are uh, a bit of a cross of uh, 20 uh, breaking below uh, the 50. Again, that's a negative 
uh, divergence there. So this is where technically market looks uh, more bearish to me than bullish. But again, in between, we get these rallies where it really throws everybody off because, you know, you have the premise and, you know, you get convinced that market maybe wants to rally higher. But then here we are getting a, a big ugly day today. So again, tomorrow, I wouldn't be surprised that if the Fed is hawkish, more hawkish, then we get towards that previous support here. Um, so this is, again, the level we will be taking a look at going to tomorrow, but more risk off than risk on based on that price action. Now, if we talk, we take a look at some of the economic reports again tomorrow. It's just not the FOMC. We're going to be starting with, let's just take a look at it first tonight. We have the Kiwi Employment Report tonight. But outside the Kiwi Employment Report, we have the U.S. Uh, ADP number. We have the uh, ISM manufacturing PMI. We got the Joel's job opening. We got the Fed rate statement and the press conference. So tomorrow is all about the the uh, USD. So we'll be starting with this economic data, but the biggest one is going to be on the FOMC statement and the press conference. How hawkish are they? You know, or are they still talking about rate cuts or is that getting pushed way down the line? These are the things that are really going to move the equity markets, the bond yields, and the USD. Now, we still have a lot to go through on um, Thursday and Friday, but I think tomorrow is the big day. So let's take a look at currency analysis and take a look at where the velocity scores are. So you can see that velocity scores is this is where we need to be. Uh, pound, dollar, and euro. On the weaker side, we got the uh, euro, uh, the Kiwi, and the Aussie. And then we uh, on a day like today, we have the Swiss franc and the yen right in the middle. CAD is also right in the middle there. Usually it's not the, the best pairing with a CAD. CAD doesn't really do much. We want to pair something that is doing the best versus the worst. So these three versus these two, and perhaps we can also take a look at Swiss franc. I still like it on the downside than to the upside here. So let's take a look at possible setups ahead. Do you want to be a professional trader? Maverick Currencies is the oldest US-based Forex and crypto prop trading company that will pay you for trading with our capital. Trade our capital and keep 70 to 80% of the profits. We are looking for traders just like you that are hardworking and motivated. Click the apply link on the top right of this video to see if you have what it takes. That link takes you to a four minute video that explains the trader position available and you read a list of FAQs that answer pretty much all the basic questions you have at this point. After watching the video and reading the FAQs, if you're interested, fill out an application, then you'll watch the full length recruiting video and then schedule an interview with one of our traders. Are you our next trader? So looking at our possible setups ahead, let's take a look at the USD first. This is where we are. Okay, what does it look like to you as far as the technical goes? This is uh, more like a little um, you know, bull pullback, and here we are rallying here. Uh, solid uh, candle uh, as we close the end of the day. So at this point, as a break above that parabolic SAR, again, I think this has the potential to go higher. Now, if you take a look at what level are we on, well, we are getting back to the October highs. So this is where we are. I think as we get towards that resistance, we still need to clear that resistance off. And that's really where the big breakout can be. OK, now take a look at the bond yields. So this is the 10 year bond yields and see where we are. We had a big fall in November and December and we're slowly climbing back up. We still have to get towards um, this 5 percent on the 10 year. Uh, to really start get concerned and that will really start to weigh down the markets. But you can see the shorter term yields, they're already rising. So what we are seeing is a bit of an unwinding of that, you know, rate cut uh, expectation that everyone was really going getting ahead of that trade. And we actually saw that last year too. If you take a look at the big, uh, let's take a look at here. If you take a look at the big fall in 2022, you can see that in the first part of, First part of the year, we just had a big rally all the way, pretty much all the way till October. I mean, pretty much that's, that's a big rally. We had a, a bit of a fall in September, but then rallied again. So again, we are this early part of this that looks very similar to what we had last year. So at this point, I think it's better to take a look at more of the dollar longs than the dollar short, because that's really where the momentum is. Now, let's take a look at some of the other ones. Kiwi, I still like the short side. Again, take a look at it. We just rejected that level again. Um, Kiwi as a basket looks weaker to me. And we will see what happened with the Kiwi employment report. That might go lower. Now, here we are 
getting a bit of a reversal on the Aussie as well. I know this was actually doing really well, but if you take a look at this, it has a really, uh, you know, bit of a, a, a reversal candle right there and then falling right below. And again, this is where, this is a critical point as a prior, uh, you know, breakout point. The resistance here is is now, you know, falling below the support. So at this point, again, Aussie Kiwi would probably suffer. And again, looking at the price action, the, the Kiwi actually looks more weaker than the Aussie. So that's really where we are. So let's take a look at some of the setups that we could find here. Aussie dollar, I mean, look at this range, back and forth, back and forth. I had a massive rally, you know, after piercing lower, I had a massive rally here. This is still range bound. If this breaks below that 64.50, we can easily see uh, it, it test below, around that 64 area. So what do you do after a big fall like this? We're going to look for some bear rallies to short into or look for some basis to, to short into. So remember, these are the two patterns we take a look at. Um, you know, that's really where we are. We have the falling RSI. I mean, the pressure is more to the downside. Same thing goes to the Kiwi. It looks extended here kind of bit. You know, we have consecutive candle to the downside. Maybe look for some bear rally or maybe a base to short into. But remember, there's going to be a two part day tomorrow. That's the economic reports that we get early in the morning. And then second is when we get the FOMC. So tomorrow is again, it's going to be where the volatility is. So that's really what we're going to be focusing on. So Aussie dollar goes on the top of my list. The Kiwi dollar goes on the top of the list. Look at the dollar says Frank. Remember, this is the one that I was really paying close attention to, even though Sis Frank as a basket wasn't a big mover. But I mean, that's a beautiful breakout right here off of this, off of this, uh, you know, long sort of uh, consolidation pattern. So I'm looking for any bull pullbacks to really buy into. If you go higher, longer term, look at this level. The, the ultimate level for this is 90 to 32. If it, which is again not too far if it breaks above that i think there is a, a decent chance for um the euro uh, the dollar is franc to rise higher but you can also take a look at currency pair like euro says franc take a look at this one you know we did pull back we are we are rallying right back up to the resistance so this is where i like the dollar says franc with the long side and even i like the euro says franc up onto the long side i think this has potential for this bull pull back to sort of go higher and break out. And then lastly, we can take a look at pounds as franc. That is also breaking out off the resistance. So this has again been an important level of resistance for a little while, and we're now getting a nice little breakout here. So you can see there's decent setups out there. So it's just a matter of the timing and understanding where the volatility is. And as we go into tomorrow, focus will be on the FOMC economic data, you know, expect some volatility and play a relative sort of weakness. So a lot, lot to focus on tomorrow and uh, early in the morning. So that's really where I want to be focusing on. So thanks for joining. Uh, happy trading. We'll see you the next one. 